All right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about my general utility shotgun. Now, this was something that I kind of wanted to build out primarily because I didn't really have a go-to tactical shotgun per se. I have quite a few hunting guns like I think most people do, but I never really um, got into the shotguns. And I think for a lot of us tactical people, you know, there's a lot of emphasis on building out something like a rifle, things like ARs, AKs, FALs, for instance. Um, and those are definitely cool. They uh, feel a lot cooler to use. They look a lot cooler but I think that there is, especially in 2024, a lot more just honest utility with a shotgun, especially something like a tube-fed shotgun, whether it's a semi-auto like a Beretta 1301 or a Benelli M4, M2, or even your or old faithfuls like the 590 Mossberg or the 870 Magnums by Remington. Um, <clears throat> there are some really good workhorses out there, and like I said, especially with the rise and prevalence of things like drones, there is a definite reality to and wanting to use something like a shotgun and I think predominantly that overall versatility in the shotgun is what led me to wanting to at least have something for that kind of tactical niche of having a tactical shotgun. So we're going to run over in this video um, what, how I set this thing up, the intentions for use, and just kind of overall the mod. So first off, let's start off with the intentions of use because that's basically what dictates how this shotgun was built up. So. Essentially, I wanted to make this thing, as I said, a general use shotgun, so I wanted it to be as well-rounded as possible. So starting off and just initially when I started using it, um, I'll roll in some pictures or sorry, some videos from when I first started using it. It just started off life with these ghost ring sights. You can see on the front and back there. And the ghost rings are great, especially for running buckshot and uh, you know different loads that pattern. But I was finding that even at closer ranges, it kind of sucks unless you're shooting a bigger target like uh, man size target or larger the slugs definitely are harder to use with ghost rings and that is just the inevitable reality of ghost rings they are they definitely have some slop to them and they are designed for fast acquisition so I don't fault these ghost rings and I still have them there but I included the use of the red dot here because I wanted something that was a little bit still something that's fast to use fast to bring up fast to shoot with but something that gives you a far more precise um, picture or target system. So this one right here, I believe, is just a crossfire from Vortex. It's nothing super fancy. And once again, I have it here, not so much that it can co-witness because um, I couldn't quite pull that off, but I have it actually elevated so that it is above the ghost ring sights, but I can also drop down on the stock and get a good sight picture with the ghost rings. So essentially the kind of POU is ghost rings for things that pattern like your buck shots, like anything like that. And if you just need to get on it and shoot, you can still do that, but also very quickly, very easily cut up and use the red dot and truthfully speaking you could use the red dot for slugs you could use the red dot for buckshot you could use the ghost rings for both as well so a little bit of a redundancy there but I did want something that was a little bit more precise for slugs because slugs are just a little bit more precise now as far as other things go with this gun and like I said, I definitely wanted to lean more into the slug application. So this one is currently loaded all with Bernicke Black Magic. Now the stock, this is the stock Mossberg 590A1 stock, at least nowadays. They previously were different than this, but it has four shot shells in here. So you guys can see two here and then of course flip it over to here. Now this is not personally my favorite way to top off the shotgun. You can do it. You could potentially, you know, for practice I've shown it before, you know, get pretty good, pretty fast at this and you know like do that kind of system it does work within reason but this is definitely not the most streamlined way to do it so i do have the side saddle over here and uh, this side saddle few things about it it is nice it holds seven rounds here so you can pretty easily you know grab your rounds from there um, far more convenient you can also keep it in your you know working vision so you can have your shotgun up break the action you know, go feed your slugs or feed whatever rounds uh, very easily but the cool thing is this thing is also 
detachable. So if I wanted to reconfigure a plate carrier or my plate carrier to have placards of shot shells, this is also, I think, the way to go. Um, at least from other people that I've seen on the YouTubes, it is better to have um, something like this Velcro uh, system so that way you can run placards on a plate carrier of shot shells and so say you deplete all seven of these rounds you just rip this off put a new placard full of shot shells on here and keep going about your business. So I think it's probably the best way if you are going to run a shotgun seriously um, or with a, you know, a decent amount of round count, you wanna have multiple placards and be able to detach them quickly. So there are some side saddles that are you know, hard plastic that attach to the actual you know, shotgun but I think that this is ultimately the better way to go. Moving on up, um, this is also the stock pump for this pump action shotgun, but this one's fully M-locked out. So what I did is of course, slings on pretty much all my firearms. And of course, pump actions are a little bit harder to sling because the pump, it's on the pump so it moves, but you know, when it's in use, it's locked in, it's pretty much right there. So not too scared about that. Um, and then of course, I added some BCM panels here that cover up the M lock and really just added them because of the BCM panels here. Um, they're just super tacky. So they give you a lot of grip when of course you're moving the action. So I did that and then I added a BCM KAG, which in my opinion, it looks a little bit tacky on there, a little bit weird, but it really does. It feels great in hand when you actually have the shotgun up and you're, you know, of course, racking it back. Um, it, it really does lock your fingers in and you feel like really, really good. So it does look a little bit tacky from that side profile as you guys can see there but um, it does it does really work so it's not just there for show so yeah a anyways aside from that um, I do have a mag pull I think this is an ms1 sling I can't quite remember yeah, it's an ms1 and I kind of jerry-rigged the ms1 because the ms1 just comes with um, just your standard like just end of fabric here so I put a quick detach um, here for it to make it just simple to mount to the uh, pump action. And then I just have a normal sling swivel on the back. So just standard sling swivel like you'd expect to see on like a hunting gun or something like that. Just kind of like I said, mixed and matched it to make it work for this particular shotgun. Um, this isn't the highest speed, lowest drag shotgun. And if I did go for Magpul's um, M-Lock kind of, um, if we went for Magpul, it's kind of specialized stock. They do have like cutie cups that you can attach these guys into, but this works for me and it honestly is just fine. So overall, um, that's kind of the shotgun. Of course, this does have the standard. This does have the standard capacity of an M590A1, and so that is seven in the tube, one in the magazine. So grand total, if you add it up, you got four shot shells in the stock, got seven on the side, and then seven in the magazine plus one, so that gives you a total of 19 shot shells total on the gun. And I think that's pretty congruent with um, what people have said um, across the board with most fighting shotguns, especially tube fed shotguns, is that you want to keep them fed. So having the, like I said, four rounds in the stock plus the seven on the side, and then of course being able to pop these off and replace them with, you know, other full shot shell um, kind of placards is I think what you want to try to do. So like I said, these guys are hungry and it's kind of hard to feed shotguns, uh, tube fed shotguns, but this is the best way that I could find. And then of course, like I said, I treat the ones more in the butt stock as kind of backups. So if I run out of ammo for whatever reason, these ones kind of just live here because like I said, especially the ones to the shooter side that are up here, they obviously have to be placed here. Um, so they're placed here and so these are not the most convenient shot shells to try to grab to put into the shotgun if you're actively loading it because of course with all reality you're gonna have to break your shooting grip so you'd have to break it come back here grab it put it in so definitely not optimal the ones definitely underneath as shown earlier are easier because you can still support the firearm with your shooting hand break grab it put it in and go so those ones are a little bit more rea realistic to use these ones not as much but the nice fact is it is ammo you can put it on your gun and you can have it for in case you need it because at least if it's on the firearm it's a lot more accessible than it being back at the truck or even on your plate carrier so the reality is having those couple extra shot shot shells is 
better than not in my opinion, but it's still not the most accessible. So anyways, guys, that has been an overlook of my kind of tactical general use shotgun. Of course, like I said, this thing can be reconfigured to shoot buckshot or birdshot as I see fit or whatever the needs may vary. Once again, if this needs to be an anti-drone type firearm, it can easily flex into that role and uh, it can easily flex into a slug gun role because this is just a cylinder bore. Um, there's no chokes on 590s, so it is just a general use shotgun. So I think this is overall pretty good setup. I'm pretty happy with it, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this kind of breakdown of the shotgun. It is uh, definitely, um, I wouldn't say entirely unique. I think other people have definitely um, integrated many of these elements, but it definitely is a little bit weird with the dual sighting system. We'll see how that ends up going in more prolonged testing. I do like it, but for now we'll see um, if it ends up getting swapped out. I will say, like I so said, there's a little bit of redundancy when it comes to the actual um, red dot, but maybe I'll even drop it back down to try to get just an actual co-witness with the sights, but I don't know, it's pretty tough because these sights are pretty darn low, so we'll see. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed it. As always, God bless, and I'm out.